echoes and feeling the ripples now of a distant sound. I listen much more deeply to its rhythm and desire. Welcome to A Distant Sound, a space where we discuss poetry, because poetry arrives in myriad ways. I am your host, Jason Fairhurst Wall. Welcome. Let's light the candle. You know, my first love is writing poetry. But I do believe that poetry arrives in myriad ways. And I say arrives because I feel the source of our inspiration as artists uh, comes to us in un the unlikeliest of times. And we need to grab that inspiration when it comes and get in the discipline and the habit of answering that call. I've been writing the written word for 30 plus years now. I do believe my first official stab at writing a poem was at age 14. I have performed my poetry in public at various open mic events and poetry shows. At one time I was even the uh, host of a monthly poetry show here locally. And through that experience and through the experience of studying different forms, styles, and um, even styles of the way poetry is spoken, I've learned quite a bit. You might say I'm autodidactic in that area, uh, both from studying and experiencing this. And I fell in love with poetry immediately, the written word especially. The spoken word is just as important because the writer gets to personalize it even more. You get to hear their voice. And I'd like to talk about the origin of the word poetry or poem. It comes from the Greek. Uh, the word is poema. And we can find that word uh, used by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Ephesians. And the word originally meant a craft or art or a workmanship, but definitely a work of art. That's why I say poetry arrives to us in, in many different ways. Of course, now we see poetry as the spoken and written word and for good reason, because in those words we see cadence and rhyme and various uh, rhythms and there's a music to it and that's why it lends itself to music and songwriting and things of that nature. Anyway, when I was 14, I tried my hand at my first poem. I'm sure it was terrible and I'm equally sure it was about a girl at the time. Um, I don't remember the content, but I do remember the title of the poem. It was called Spiral Skyline. And I really wish I had a copy of that poem. I would read it here for you. But I don't. But I do remember feeling melancholy when I wrote it. By the way, 
I think there's a preconception that poetry is a brooding art, and it certainly is at times, but not always. There are many, many styles, like I said, many different things that one can write about. And you can grow in stages. Yes, when I first started writing poetry, I'm sure it was very brooding and melancholy, and at times it still is, but I have learned to grow in, in various ways through the craft. When I was 17 years old, I was charged with memorizing William Shakespeare's sonnets, most specifically Sonnet 60. And it's there that I really learned about meter and the way poems sound and I poured over Sonnet 60 and memorized it in a short period of time and it sticks with me to this day and I, I would like to start us off by reciting that from memory even now to test my chops. And again, I'm not reading from a script on this, I'm doing it from the heart, from memory. Here goes. Sonnet 60 by William Shakespeare. Like as the waves make toward the pebbled shore, so do our minutes hasten to their end. Each changing place with that which goes before, in sequent toil all forwards do contend. Nativity, once in the main of light, crawls to maturity wherewith being crowned. Crooked eclipses gainst his glory fight, and time that gave doth now his gift confound. Time doth transfix the flourish set on youth, and delves the parallels in beauty's brow, feeds on the rarities of nature's truth, and nothing stands but for his scythe to mow. And yet to times in hope my verse shall stand, praising thy worth despite his cruel hand. I don't know why I go into that voice, but I think it's appropriate for Shakespeare. It is important, and many poets will tell you this, to read other poets. Not that it takes away from your own, shall we say, unique poetic voice. It actually adds, at the end of the day, everything's borrowed anyway. There's nothing new under the sun, as the sacred scriptures say. My current favorite form, and it's a simple form of poetry, is the Japanese form, tonka. It's ancient in nature. It's much like haiku in its beginning structure. But the thing about Tonka is it adds two extra thoughts, lines, as it were. Uh, the original form in Japanese was written in one continuous line. Anyway, the English equivalent is 31 syllables, five lines. And the syllable count goes First line five, second line seven, third line five, fourth line seven, last and fifth line seven. Now the first two, much like haiku in a tonka, describe a scene. You're not adding anything extra to it, you're just capturing that scene. Now the third line, traditionally, as it's translated into English, nowadays anyway, 
it's kind of a joining line between the first two and the last two. And then the last two, it offers you as a poet the ability for commentary, to personalize what you're seeing or to relate it to something. So that gives you the opportunity to be more metaphorical in your language. I love it because it can serve as standalone good poetry or as an exercise to get there, to do other forms. I've often written multiple tankas, or I'm sorry, tanka, and put it into one lo longer poem. And that's always fun to do. So I would encourage listeners out there, anyone interested in poetry for the first time, to maybe look up that form, Tonka, T-A-N-K-A. -A. Study a little bit about the history in Japan. I, if memory serves me correctly, I do believe it started out as poetry between lovers, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, a way to court one another. And I also do believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I'll tell you how to do that later, um, Tonka connotates song or short song is the way it's translated, I do believe. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Anyway, at this time, I'd like to tell you about a way to get in touch with me, the host. The best way to do that is write me an email about anything on your mind about poetry, art, life in general. You can do that by emailing me at a distant sound at gmail.com. That's one continuous word, a distant sound at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. So now what I'd like to do is make a transition and talk about a few things that are my favorite things. I'm going to talk about three in particular. This gives you little snippets about my likes, dislikes, quirks, obsessions, things of that nature. I really love the number five. You know, I was thinking about this the other day and I'm like, why do I like the number five so much? Here's what I came up with. If you look at the shape of the number five, it has a level head and a proud chest. It's kind of a poetic way of describing the number five, which is apropos uh, to our time here. And to me, when you count from one to ten, five is pretty much smack dab in the middle. I like balance. I like the middle way. Of course, I mentioned the overall shape. It's similar to an S, but it's not. It just, it's very sexy. However, I once flirted with really liking the number four, but the number five got jealous. And five has always been my first love as far as numbers go, so I decided to be more faithful to the number five. As far as punctuation marks go, my favorite there is the semicolon. I, in fact, have a semicolon tattoo near my left wrist. To me, it signifies continuance, continuance of life and thought. Um, also nowadays, it makes a reference to mental health. Uh, many people have the semicolon tattoo, various parts on their body to signify their struggle in the area of mental health. I'm no exception to that and how they've overcome. And I can see that theme tying in with continuance. It's not the end of the story. The first clause, as it were, might have been a bad clause, but that second clause is really where it's at. And any good story has conflict and trouble that the protagonist has to overcome. 
so that's why I like the semicolon. My favorite color in general is blue, but to be more specific, I really like a color called Casal, C-A-S-A-L. In Portuguese, the color or the word Casal means couple, and it kind of connotates a joining of two things or two people. And, you know, that kind of ties into the semicolon now that I think about it. But anyway, um, to me, if you look at the color Casal, and anyone can look it up on the internet to get the RGB numbers if you're into color theory and things of that nature, which I am. I don't have that for you here today, though. But to me, it's a, a blending of green and blue, more on the blue side, kind of a muted, subdued color. But it's, again, it gives me a feeling of balance. And uh, there's a little bit of gray in there that just makes it really nice. So that's a little bit about me. Now at this time, I'd like to include in the broadcast here, some of my own recent poetry, both written and spoken. Uh, it's a trilogy of poems, and the main crux of the theme, I believe, is that less is more. Oftentimes, less is more. And sometimes things in life don't go our way, and we get stripped of those things, and we become more self-aware as a result so in the end it's an actual good thing anyway this is the setup for that and this is a trilogy of poems all along the same theme first second third act kind of a thing set to music and i hope you enjoy it very much In the scenes, the means seem to serve themselves. While I sit in waiting, while I raise my head, wondering, while I let my mind sail to almost no avail. She seems to sit as well on the outside, paused, hungry, but not for me. There's nothing to show me nothing there to set me free from these self-imposed chains and down down the lies continue to reign but they too are self-imposed echoing in the chambers, reverberating from years past, when the die was first cast. And I know I haven't let them go. I know their purposes. I know their origins. But yet I hold fast to them. 
I hold fast. I hold fast. I hold. Sighing out the end of love, breathing in the surety, pruning away the dead growth, dreaming around maturity, seeing the purest faces, holding the fiercest tongues, lips hung, words in places, eyes pierced, hands wrung, softest brown all around, everything else white. Nails pounded in the ground, fears gripped, grips tightened, a notice sent to me alone, pristine paper, scribes clear and dear, felt here to the bone, echoes of a single tear. For a segment I'd like to call Get to Know an Artisan. Recently, I had an interaction with burgeoning music producer and master beat creator AWOL. That's A W A L L. I emailed him five points on which I wanted him to talk about as an artist, and the following. Is a recording of his responses. Check it out. Hey, what it do, what it do? AWOL here. I uh, just wanted to talk to the whole podcast, uh, joining JFW Poetics here. And uh, just to talk about myself a little bit, I uh, was born in Colorado, grew up in Cali, you know, and right now I'm just trying to do what I do while I'm still loving it and uh, just make the best out of it and build a steady life, you know? So, uh, you know, that's really at the end of the day what it is, you know, just doing what's best for you and others around you uh, while not letting off into the deep abyss, you know, getting too carried away with the stuff you do, but it's all not fun. You know, it's just what I like doing. Um, 
been working with a couple of artists. You'll hear about that later. Uh, yeah, you can find me on social media. Uh, it's Mr. Dot Wall Snapchat. Uh, on Instagram, it's prod by a underscore wall. And uh, yeah, let's get on with the rest of the podcast. So I uh, wanted to mention some of my influences that I've had first off right at the bat. And, uh, you know, I've been mostly uh, self-trained in this area, you know, self-taught. You know, I just ended up one day, you know, about two years ago, just ended up, got a computer, used my mom's computer, you know, opened up this really, uh, really cheap, it was actually free uh, software. And I started making beats and I, I couldn't do shit, you know. I couldn't do nothing on there. I was like, what the hell am I looking at, you know? Then over time, I started, you know, making beats on my phone and just overall messing with it. And ended up to where I'm at today. You know, it's just a lot of trial and tribulation to where uh, you want to be at. Now, with that being said, I would uh, like to talk about my collaborations a little bit and just give details on that and uh, the artists I've worked with so far. Uh, first, right off the bat, I actually have just completed producing an album for an old friend of mine uh, on Instagram. It's Jumpin', Jumpin' Joshua <laughs> and uh, I produced, you know, three maybe off of his album i'm pretty sure it's three and i've also uh produced some solo tracks for him as well you can find that on soundcloud just search up joe j-o-e on soundcloud there's uh quite a few i produced for him and um i'm currently in the works with creating an album with my cousin that should be coming out in a few months if you'd like to check that out just you know follow me on instagram and get the newest updates about that um yeah and i another collaboration i did was actually with the creator of this podcast jfw poetics i made a couple tracks with him uh you'll hear about that too um and at the end there will be uh one of the tracks that me and him made just as a little you know sending off of the podcast uh he's actually my father which is pretty cool you know um being able to work with him has been a blessing and overall, you know, very, uh, you know, situations. This also involved bonding, you know, that stuff of that sort. You know, it's just been an overall pleasure to be making tracks with them and the amazing artistry that is involved with all of my collaborations. You know, I just am thankful for the whole rundown and, and everything that's been happening lately as far as that. And I wanna give a shout out to all my collaborations, you know, just cause I feel like they deserve, you know, more recognition and with the overall artistry that they involve within themselves and their tracks that they put out themselves. And uh, yeah. Some of my favorite tracks that I've done, um, as far as collaboration-wise, uh, 24 Hours that I produced for Joe, uh, Ancient Tonka Medley that I produced for JFW Pro Poetics that will be at the end of the song, or not the song, the podcast, I'm sorry. Um, as far as my own tracks that I've made myself, I don't really have a favorite because I make so many, you know, I just listen to them and, and, you know, just go in the moment. I don't really have favorites as far as that goes. I just, you know, make the tracks, you know, do what I gotta do. Um, Now, as far as talking about growth as an artist, um, you know, really, I started, as I mentioned earlier before, about two years ago. Um, I was using my mom's computer and I was, you know, looking at beats and stuff like that, you know, maybe, you know, let me try this out, you know, 
So I went on. I was with uh, my group of friends at the time. I went on there and I started, you know, using the software and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know, so I gave up on that. And then, you know, a couple months go by and I got an iPhone and I'm starting to make beats out there. And they were garbage, you know, they, they were so garbage. <laughs> and I didn't know what the hell I was doing at the time, but overall, you know, trial and tribulation to get to where I'm at now. My beats have progressed outstandingly, you know. I'm not the best, obviously, you know. But I like what I'm doing and I'm passionate about it. And, you know, what I like doing strives me as a person and as an artist. So that's really what it is about at the end of the day. You know, it's just the growth and the mindset within the artist himself or herself, whomever it be. Um, you know, and I just want to thank, you know, all my fans and my supporters, my family, all my collaborations, you know, Jumpin' Joe, JFW Poetics, my cousin, you know, everybody. So uh, I'm going to hand it off to you. Thank you very much, AWOL. I'm definitely a supporter of your artistry. And I think the sky is truly the limit for you. Let me fill you in on a little secret. AWOL just happens to be my son. He and I collaborated on the following track. It's his original beat pacing the flow of a series of tonka that I wrote. Take a listen to Ancient Tonka Medley. thoughts straightened by using the weaker side miracles can be obtained walking higher now and for now just don't look down never say sorry for the stilts you have to use keep you from living death, even as you shake, even as they rail at you, barking for your fall, level with your line of sight, raising your chin to stand.
And now I'd like to end our time together by reading an excerpt from the New Testament. It's Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the New International Version. And this excerpt is found in chapter 2, and it's verses 8 through 10. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork his poema, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Notice the poetry. It's time to blow out the candle in five, four, three, two, one.